Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my personal secrets to a perfect, flawless, professional, easy eyeshadow application every time. No matter what palette or color story you're working with, this is the solution, the formula to getting a perfect eye look. And it is super easy. As I explain my little formula to you guys, we're gonna do two different looks. I'm gonna do a more neutral look on one side, something a little bit more colorful on the other, which hopefully will demonstrate to you guys that this formula works no matter what you are working with. Should be a fun one. I hope you guys are excited. Before we get into it, a special welcome to any of my new visitors here. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you enjoy this video and I hope that you'll consider subscribing before you leave. Also make sure notifications are turned on, but that's enough for intros. Let's get right to it. So for this demonstration, before we get into to kind of the technique. There are three things that I will be using today. First off is a good brush. You really just need one good blending brush and one smaller brush to add some detail. I am just using one brush today and it is one that I highly, highly recommend. It's from Persona. This is the Blend and Apply brush. I've raved about this a few times before, but I'm not sure even my raving have truly demonstrated my love for this brush. It is fantastic. The softest brush that I own, this blending brush truly feels like air on your eyes. You cannot feel it at all. It's very nice and loose, which I really love because it does a great job of blending. And then this apply side, which you can see is a little smaller, more of a kind of traditional apply like C-shaped blending brush, but it's much looser than so many other brushes like this that I've used before. So it's great for applying, but you can also blend with this one in a little bit more detail. Can't recommend it enough, but if you have anything just like a basic shaped like blending brush like this and maybe something along the lines of kind of like a smudgy C shaped brush like this or even just a tiny blending brush like this would do the trick. So today we're gonna be working with two different eyeshadow palettes. On my right side, we're gonna do something more neutral. We're gonna use the Wet n Wild Nude Awakening palette. Simple, affordable eyeshadow palette, very neutral. It's a pretty basic palette, but do not underestimate these Wet n Wild palettes. You guys know how much I love them. This is a really good one for those of you that don't like too much color. And then on the left, we're gonna do something a little bit more colorful using the same formula, and we are going to use the Nabla Analog Cutie Palette. You can see this one, we've got some some very warm orangey browns, this duochrome kind of golden coral. It's so beautiful. It's a good one. You know I love these palettes. They're also some of my favorites. So my secret formula, as I'm calling it, is very, very simple. Really, the way to think about eyeshadows, no matter what palette you are looking at, don't think so much in terms of colors. Think so much in finishes and also ranges of depth, light, medium, and dark. For the most simple eye looks that still look well done, are very polished and professional looking, you need three different types of eyeshadows. You need a deep matte, a mid-tone matte, and a lighter shimmer. It doesn't matter what the colors are, what the undertones are, if you have those three key ingredients, you can get perfect application every time. If you wanna go one level more advanced than that, you can also use a mid-tone shimmer. So we're talking about a deep matte, a mid-tone matte, a mid-tone shimmer, and a light shimmer. That's gonna give you a little bit more dimension and variety, but again, it's more about the finishes and the undertones or the depth of the shadows than anything else. And this is the order that I apply those in. I start with the mid-tone shimmer. That is going to be kind of your build block. The reason I use a mid-tone shimmer, it's often called the transition shade, is it's going to create a foundation for other shades to build and blend on top of. If you're just using something really light and really dark, because they're so different, it's hard to get those two shades to blend together without having to over blend. Having a mid-tone matte is kind of like a meeting place for all the other shades. So I will take that mid-tone shade on a blending brush and I will throw that, usually I start up slightly above the crease, and I'll kind of just work that up through the crease about two thirds of the way in and then pull some of it in towards the halfway mark of my eyelid. It's just a good like foundation that you're putting down for the rest of your shades to blend on top of. Then I will go with my deeper matte. That I usually will apply with something like this or just the tip end of a brush like this, my blending brush, and I will apply that more precisely just right here in the outer socket and I'll usually concentrate at the lower lash line. So whenever I'm dipping into a darker matte shade, I always first place that down right here and then work my way up and in. That's gonna give you the best blend. If you initially apply the shade right here, then you're left trying to blend it down and sometimes you can get some patchiness if you do it that way. I find it easier to place it right at the lash line where you want the most depth and then work your way up and in. And then the lighter shimmer, I just pop on the inner half of my lid. And that's pretty much it. We're gonna demonstrate this starting with the Color Icon palette. This is the Nude Awakening version. You could do this with any of these palettes, by the way. Love these three 
as well if you want berry tones, warm golds and bronzes, or some more cool tones, like smoky cool tones. The same formula applies, but we're gonna start in the Nude Awakening palette. So this is going to be my building block shade. This is the mid-tone matte. I'm gonna take that on my blending brush right here. Really like to load it up in there. If you're working with some higher end formulas that are more pigmented, you don't need to spend a lot of time like loading up your brush. If I'm working with Natasha Denona mattes, Sydney Grace mattes, even the Nabla mattes, they're a little bit more pigmented sometimes. So I'm often a little more light-handed. With the Wet n Wild shadows, you can really load these up though. So again, this one I start right at the outer corner and I just start working my way up, kind of through and above the crease, and then down towards the lash line. You don't need to be too precise with this shade. The darker it is from your natural skin tone, the more careful you'll want to be. And then I also kind of will take a touch of it just down below this outer portion of my lower lash line. If you do like to apply shadow on your lower lash line, you can take the back end of this apply brush. I'm gonna take just a little bit on the tip and we're gonna run that under the lower lash line as well. This is optional. I feel like it ties a look together, but if you don't like the look of shadow on your lower lash line, you can skip this part. Okay, so there is our building block. Now we're gonna start adding a little bit of depth to the outer corner. You have a few options in this palette. You could go with this more red-toned brown, which is quite red. This is pretty colorful. I love shades like this. This would probably be my preference, my number one pick when reaching into this palette, but I wanna keep this look very neutral, not too colorful. So today we're gonna to take this kind of charcoaly matte brown right here. Personally, I usually avoid going with a black unless you know that you love a good smoky black outer corner. I can find them to be a little bit harder to blend sometimes. So I will just stick with the dark brown. I'm taking that fluffy brush, but I'm just barely applying it right to the tip. And remember, you want to initially tap this down right at the lash line. So most of that pigment is deposited right by your lashes. And then we're gonna work very lightly up and in. I'm not pressing very hard with this brush. If you want even more precision, you could do the same thing with this brush right here. You'll see this is just gonna really add some depth and shape to this outer corner. So there we have it. See how that added just some depth, a little bit of shape to this outer corner. I'm perfectly happy with that. If you want to add just a little bit more definition and shape, you can take the ply side of that brush, take a tiny bit just right on the tip. And again, we're gonna tap that right, right by the lashes on this outer third of the eyelid. And I'm just going back and forth, pulling in an upwards direction. And you could even smudge a little bit down below just to create a really nice shape right here. You want the most depth to be right where your lower and upper lashes meet, just right there. So for the mid-tone shimmer for this look, you have a couple of options with this palette. You could go with either of these rose golds. This one's a little bit more warm and brown. This one has more of like a taupey kind of undertone to it. Or if you want a lot of brightness, you could take this champagne right here. I would recommend if you have very small eyes and you really want to open them up, the champagne's a good option to do that, but it's also less natural looking. So it's going to be very dramatic. So if you want something more dramatic and brightening, take the champagne. If you want it more kind of natural looking, use one of these lighter or mid-tone shimmers. We're gonna take the lighter rose gold up here. And I'm just going to apply that starting in the center of the lid. And then working my way in. And I'm not going to take it out to where those really dark shades are just about two thirds of the way across. Okay, and there you have it. If you wanna add a little bit of sparkle, you could take that light champagne and throw it on your inner corner. Why don't we go ahead and do that? I know that I said we just used three shades, but I always like an inner corner highlight. Again, this is optional. Okay, so there you have it. Just a basic, simple eye look on this side. If you wanna throw on some liner, I always like adding some liner. I feel like it just adds a little bit more shape, a little bit more definition, but you don't have to. This step is optional. This is just my Wet n Wild Coal Eyeliner Pencil. 
Just taking a little baby wing, starting at the lashes and just pulling it slightly up. And that's really it right there. I'm gonna throw on a couple of coats of my Tower 28 mascara, then I'll be back and we will go over to the second side. And here's that first look completed with mascara. Very simple, very easy, but as you can see, very nice and polished. Now let's go over to the other side. We're gonna work with the Nabla Cutie Analog Palette. This one is a little bit colorful, a little bit warm, a little bit orange in tone. So this one, we're gonna do the same thing. Start off with our transition shade or building block shade that would be this one right here I did just wipe off my persona brush let's dip into that first mid-tone matte and same thing we're just gonna start right at and above the crease if you have a smaller space between your crease and your brow you can keep it directly in your crease I have a very large brow bone so I like to take mine a little bit above just to minimize that brow bone space then with what's left on that fluffy brush, we're just pulling it down toward the lash line and in just a little bit. Now we're gonna take that same shade on the back end of that brush, the apply side. We're gonna run a little bit under the lower lash line. Again, this part is optional. And I only ever like to do my lower lash line with my mid-tone matte. Occasionally I'll take the darker shade just right at the outer corner. But because my eyes are smaller, I like to keep the dark shades just right at the outer corner. So I'm gonna dip in one more time to that same shade on that smaller brush. And I just wanna run a little bit of this right at the lash line to meet up with this outer corner shade. And then we'll build on top of that. Next, we're gonna go to our deeper matte. Now you have two options in here. You could take the very dark kind of chocolatey brown right here or the darker orangey brown. I wanna keep this look more colorful, but not quite as smoky. So we're gonna take this shade right here, which is the shade camera roll. And we'll just build on top of that orange that we already put down. So I have this just on the very tip of that blending brush, starting at the lashes. So I deposit all that color right there at my lash line and then I just kind of go back and forth pulling it up towards my outer V and down and then you can kind of slightly round out this crease right here if you want to use the back end of the brush the smaller brush it will give you a little bit more precision a little more shape I just want this to be really nice and blended and diffused though so I'm using the larger blending brush and we might come back and do some shaping with the smaller end. Did you see how well those blend together? Having the mid-tone matte and the deeper matte just creates a very seamless blend that does not actually require a ton of blending. All right, I do wanna add just a little bit more shape to that outer corner. So we're gonna take that brush right there. You'll probably leave it here. I mean, this is pretty adequate, but if you really want to shape out this outer corner, maybe even add some depth down below. Same thing that I did on the other side. I'm taking that smaller brush end Starting at the lash line, pulling it up on the angle and then very lightly pulling some of that down below. This is just gonna give you that really nice shape that ties down to your lower lash line. Just makes it look a little more professional and finished, but it doesn't, you can see, add a ton of depth because we're just sticking it right on the outer corner. All right, let's add a little bit of shimmer. We're gonna do a mid-tone shimmer and a lighter shimmer. For the mid-tone shimmer, we're taking this shade right here, which is called Overexposed. This is like a corally, it's like a fiery coral orange with a bit of a gold reflect in it. Careful, there is a little bit of fallout with this shade, so I'm gonna hold this cotton pad underneath. This is gonna go on the center of my lid. I like to use my finger. You can use a brush. Brushes will give you a little more natural of a finish. If you like the reflective quality, finger is the best way to go. You could also use a flat brush with a little bit of setting spray on it, but I just love using my finger. So I'm just going right on the center, I wipe off that same finger, and I'm gonna tap it. This is clean, just tapping along that inner edge so the other shimmer that we lay down will blend over the top of that one seamlessly. And now we're gonna go for the brightening gold. We're gonna take this shade right here. This is 35 millimeter, really nice, warm, golden champagne. And this one, I like to apply that with my pinky finger right the inner portion of the lid and then tap it in towards the center mark. If you're using your finger and you find that you get too much shimmer maybe down 
Here on your inner corner, just take a clean sponge or the sponge that you use to apply your foundation or concealer if you did that, and just tap it in that inner socket to kind of remove any of that shimmer that got where you didn't want it to go. All right, there we have it. Isn't that beautiful? So that's really it. Again, you could leave it there. Just throw on some mascara. If you like liner, you can add some liner. I'm just gonna add a little bit of my Wet n Wild liner. Same thing I did with the other side. Starting at this outer corner and just flicking it up and then slightly in along the lashes. Less than halfway. This is just for some shape on the outer corner. I'm gonna throw on a couple coats of my Tower 28 mascara and then I'm gonna zoom you guys out. We'll take a look at both sides. I'll give you some final thoughts and ideas. We'll look at a couple other palettes. I'll kind of show you some examples and we will be all done. All right, so here are the two finished looks. Number one. Number two, the looks are a little bit different. The palettes were a little bit different, but the formula is pretty much the same. So quickly, I wanna walk you guys through just a couple of different palettes to show you how I would apply the same formula regardless of what palette I'm working with. Let's start with this one right here. This is the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. So I would kick things off with a mid-tone matte, probably this shade, this shade or this shade right here. Depending on if I want it a little warmer, a little cooler, then I would deepen out my outer corner with something maybe here or here. Then I could do two things. I could add a mid-tone shimmer, maybe this gold right here, maybe this taupe right here, maybe this kind of more charcoaly if I want it a little more smoky or this brown. And then I would go to my inner corner to brighten things up with this shade, this shade, this, this, or this. Those are all really nice, bright, reflected shimmers that really open up your eye. So that's how I would compose a look using this palette. Let's jump over to a drugstore palette. This is the Wet n Wild Color Icon palette. This is a more berry toned palette. This one is the Heart and Soul. Love this palette, such pretty berry tones. So for this one, I would start with one of these two matte shades right here as my mid-tone matte. Then I would darken up my outer corner with this brown or this rich kind of cherry color or even this brown right here, which is just a touch lighter than this one down here. And then I would throw on a shimmer. I could use this one if I want it really nice and bright, or I could do a combination of one of these two in the center and then this one for my inner corner, inner lid shade. That's going to give me same type of look, different tones. Let's go with one more. This one right here is the Fresh Greens palette from ColourPop, so we're working with some greens with this one, but the same thing kind of applies. The mid-tone matte for me would probably be either this green or this green. Now this one is a bit dark for a starting shade for me, but I can get it to work unless I want something more colorful like this lighter green right here that does have a strong green coloring to it. It's not as neutral as this one, but it's also a little bit lighter. I could use either of those as my starting point. Then to deepen out my outer corner, I would take either this kind of khaki green or this kind of brownish green right here. Then for my light shimmer, I would take this shade right here or this shade right here, depending on what, what I'm in the mood for. If I want some dimension, I'll throw on one of these greens in the center of the lid before I go into the light tones. And that will give me a flawless green toned look. So I hope that this formula was helpful for you guys. Remember, mid-tone matte, darker matte, and a lighter shimmer. You can play with this a little bit as far as how dark do you wanna go in the outer corner, how light do you wanna go on the inner part of your lid. One thing to keep in mind, the lighter of a shade you put on the inner part of the lid, the more it's going to brighten and open up your eyes. I especially recommend that for those of you that have smaller eyes. I really cannot put a darker shade on the inner part of my lid because it really closes off my eyes and makes them look even smaller than they are, and I do have quite small eyes. However, if you have large eyes, there is nothing wrong with accentuating how large and beautiful your eyes are. So again, throwing that bright shade on the inner part of your lid is just really gonna open things up and make them look amazing. But that is it, you guys. That is my secret formula. It's really not that secret, but this is how I kind of think of things as I'm composing an eye look with any palette that I'm using. I hope you guys found this helpful. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today. I hope that you're all doing well. Let me give you one last reminder. If you have not yet subscribed, please do that before you leave. And I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye.